Hello, in this topic we will talk about pediatric regional anesthesia. The caudal anesthesia is one form of pediatric regional anesthesia which is being practiced from ages for perioperative pain management in pediatric patients. But pediatric regional anesthesia is not limited to caudal. All the different forms of central uraxial blockade and peripheral nerve block which we practice in adult can also be safely performed in pediatric patients and evidence-based medicine has proven that. But as we all know that a pediatric patient is not a small adult, we need to appreciate the difference in the anatomy, physiology and pharmacology of pediatric patients with adult for a safe regional anesthesia practice. And in this topic, we will talk firstly about those differences and we would understand the clinical implication of those differences. After that, we also should know for a safe pediatric anesthesia practice, the myths and controversies which are related to pediatric regional anesthesia and what are the recommendations for those myths and controversies. After discussing all these things, we will talk about the caudal anesthesia in the last portion of this uh, topic. The most common regional anesthesia practiced in pediatric patient. So let us start our discussion with understanding the difference between the pediatric and adult central nervous system, right? Which and what are the clinical implications when we are practicing the central uraxial blockade, right? Because of these differences. So let us see this table. Now, if I'm comparing in this table, the difference between the neonates, infants, CNS with adult. Uh, for practicing spinal anesthesia, we need to know that at what level the spinal cord ends. In adult, we know that conus medullaris ends at the level of the lower border of L1. And subarachnoid block can be performed any, in any interspinous space below this level safely. But in your neonates, the conus medullaris ends much lower at the lower border of L3 or L4. And in your infants, it, is, it can be either at L1 level, L2 level or L3 level. So while performing the subarachnoid block, the level of needle insertion should be below the L4 level for both neonates and infant for uh, avoiding any direct injury to the spinal cord, to the conus medullaris, right? So in neonates, in neonates, and infants and infants subarachnoid block subarachnoid block should be performed should be performed at l4 or below right l4 or below to avoid direct trauma to spinal cord to avoid direct trauma to spinal cord Okay, now this is important practice which we need to take care in our mind when we are performing subarachnoid block, right? But when we are performing epidural or we are performing caudal block, one special precaution which we need to take, knowing the and difference in the anatomy in adult, the dural sac terminates at the level of S2, but in neonate and infant, it terminates at much lower level. In neonates at the level of S3 or S4 and in infant at S2 or S3. So there is a always a risk of dural puncture when we are giving lumbar epidural or caudal block. So in order to eliminate this risk of dural puncture or minimize the risk of dural puncture, we should use ultrasound while performing the block. The ultrasound will give us a margin of good margin of safety. And also, if let's say if I'm not using ultrasound, then also we can give these block, but we should use pediatric compatible needle, right, for performing the blocks. Adult needles, if used in pediatric, the risk of injury would increase, the risk of dural puncture would increase. So pediatric compatible, the size, the diameter, it should be followed. And not only this, with the risk associated with the puncture of dural sac, the risk of last associated with it. To minimize that risk, we should give the drugs in small allocates, right? Small, small, let's say 2 2 ml allocates, we should give the drug. So remember, for pediatric and let's say pediatric patient, for infant and neonates, there is a risk of risk of dural 
puncture dural puncture right to minimize last to minimize last while giving the drug while giving drug through caudal through caudal or lumbar epidural lumbar epidural right we need to give drugs in small allocates right lumbar epidural we need to give drugs in small allocates so la should be given in small allocates okay and it is advisable highly advisable to use ultrasound and pediatric compatible uh, needles for performing the caudal block and lumbar epidural so it is advisable advisable to use ultrasound ultra sound for caudal block caudal and lumbar epidural block and lumbar epidural block okay so this is important thing which we need to keep in mind while we are giving caudal and epidural now apart from this the bony prominence is one of the important let's say landmarks which we use for identifying the interspinous space now tuffier's line that is one of the common bony landmark which we use for identifying the interspinous space the tuffier line that is intercristal line it corresponds to the level of l4 5 in adult the l4 l5 interspinous space but tuffier's line is at much lower level in your neonate and infant in neonate it is at the level of s5 l5 s1 and in infant also at l5 s1 so we need to appreciate this difference while we are identifying the interspinous space so difference difference in the level of tuffier's line level of tuffier's line requires to be appreciated to find the interspinous space requires to be appreciated right if you see this image this is the iliac crest and the tuffier's line is in between the intercrystal line between the two iliac crest of the both sides and it corresponds to l5 s1 in infant and it corresponds to l4 l5 above 1 year of age right so above 1 year of age the intercrystal line is at l4 l5 and in infant and neonate it is at l5 s1 and we need to appreciate this difference and if you see in the same image the termination of conus medullaris in more than 1 years at the lower border of l1 right and below 1 year and in your neonates it is much lower l3 l4 so for a safe spinal anesthesia practice we have to choose the interspinous level below l4 right so these difference we need to appreciate now curvature of the spine adult has two de defined curvature of the spine the thoracic and the lumbar the thoracic curvature and the lumbar curvature but in neonate we have a single curvature single spinal curvature and in infant right we have cervical curvature and lumbar curvature because of this difference in the curvature the how do we insert the needle it affects that in adult we insert the needle at an angle between the interspinous space because of the this thoracic and lumbar curvature but in pediatric less than 1 year we need to go more horizontal we need to take our needle more horizontal and not only this since there is a single curvature the risk of drug spreading cranially is higher in your neonates an infant compared to adult right so remember that at in pediatric in pediatric needle insertion needle insertion should be more horizontal more horizontal while in adult it is at an angle and risk of cranial spread of drug is more in pediatric risk of cranial spread of drug is higher right so we need to take the proper precautions now vertebrae now in pediatric the